In this lecture, we will work with Pygame. This lecture will use the concept of displaying and moving images that we learned in the last lecture, and use that idea to create a simple car racing game where the user has to drive a car and avoid oncoming traffic. Up at the top of the code, we will import Pygame and random so that we can use these namespaces in our program. Next, we will create some constant variables that will store the colors used throughout the program. Let's create a variable named black and set it to a tuple with the values 0, 0, and 0. Then we will create a variable named white and set it to a tuple with the values 255, 255, and 255. Next, we will create a variable named gray and set it to a tuple with the values 20, 20, and 20. After that, we will have a variable named text color set to a tuple with the values 250, 135, and 10. Then we need to call pygame.init to initialize the pygame engine. Now we are going to create a car class. We will implement the init function which will take in several parameters. Self, x with a default value of 0, y with a default value of 0, dx with a default value of 4, dy with a default value of 0, width with a default value of 30, and height with a default value of 30. Then we will set self.image to an empty string, self.x equal to x, self.y equal to y, self.dx equal to dx, self.dy equal to dy, self.width equal to width, and self.height equal to height. Next, we will create a load image function that takes in two parameters, self and image. Inside of this function, we will set self.image equal to pygame.image.load and pass in img. Then we will call dot convert alpha to apply the transparent background of the PNG. After that, we will type self.image.setColor key and pass in black. Next, we will create a function named drawImage, inside of which we will type screen.blit and pass in self.image as the first argument, and a list with the values self.x and self.y as the second argument. Then we will create a moveX function, inside of which we will increment self.x by self.dx using the plus equals operator. Next, we will create a moveY function where we increment self.y by self.dy using the plus equals operator. After that, we will create a function named checkout of screen. Inside of this function, we will check if self.x plus self.width is greater than 400 or self.x is less than zero. If that is the case, we will decrement self.x by self.dx using the minus equals operator. Next, we will create a function responsible for checking if there was a collision. We will name the function check collision and it will take in several parameters player x, player y, player width, player height, car x, car y, car width, and car height. Inside of this function, we will check if player x plus player width is greater than car x, and player x is less than car x plus car width, and player y is less than car y plus car height and player y plus player height is greater than car y. If so, we know that there was a collision and we will return true, else we will return false. Then we will create a variable named size and set it to a tuple with a width of 400 and a height of 700. This will be the width and height of our game screen. Next, we will create a variable named screen and set it equal to pygame.display.setMode and pass in size. After that, we will call pygame.display.setCaption and pass in the string racing game. Then we need to create a variable named done and set it equal to false. Next, we will have a variable named clock that we set equal to pygame.time.clock. After that, we will create a variable named player and set it equal to a car with 175 passed in as the first argument, 475 passed in as the second argument, 0 passed in as the third argument, 0 passed in as the fourth argument, 70 passed in as the fifth argument, and 131 passed in as the sixth argument. Then we will type player.loadImage and pass in the string car.png, the name of one of the images we downloaded as a course resource earlier in the video. After that, we will set player.image equal to pygame.transform.scale and pass in player image as the first argument and the tuple with the values 130,150 passed in as the second argument. This is so that we can scale the player car down to have a width of 130 and a height of 150. Next, we will create a variable named collision which we set equal to true and a score variable that we set equal to zero. Then we will create a variable named font40 and set it equal to pygame.font.sysfont with the string Ariel passed in as the first argument, 40 passed in as the second argument, true passed in as the third argument, and false passed in as the fourth argument. 
Next, we will have a variable named font30 set equal to pygame.font.sysfont with Ariel passed in as the first argument, 30 passed in as the second argument, true passed in as the third argument, and false passed in as the fourth argument. Next, we will create a variable named text title and set it equal to font40.render and pass in the string racing game as the first argument, true as the second argument, and text color as the third argument. Then we will create a variable named text ints that we will set equal to font30.render and pass in the string click to start as the first argument, true as the second argument, and text color as the third argument. After that, we will create a function named draw main menu. Inside of this function, we will type screen.blit and pass in text title as the first argument and an array with size at index 0 divided by 2 minus 106 and size at index 1 divided by 2 minus 100. Then we will create a variable named score text that we set equal to font40.render and pass in the string score concatenated to the score as the first argument, true as the second argument, and text.color as the third argument. Next, we will call screen.blit and pass in score text as the first argument, a list with size at index 0, divided by 2, minus 70 as the first item, and size at index 1 divided by 2, minus 30 as the second item. After that, we will type screen.blit and pass in text ints as the first argument, and an array with size at index 0 divided by 2, minus 85 as the first item, and size at index 1 divided by 2 plus 40 as the second item. Then we need to call pygame.display.flip. After that, we will have a variable named cars set equal to an empty list. Then we will have a variable named car count set equal to 2. Let's create a for loop for i in range car count. Inside of the for loop, we will have a variable named x set equal to random.randrange with 0 passed in as the first argument and 340 passed in as the second argument. Then we need a variable named car set to a car object with x passed in as the first argument, random.randrange, negative 150 to negative 50 passed in as the second argument, 0 passed in as the third argument, random.randint, 5, 10 passed in as the fourth argument, 60 passed in as the fifth argument, and 60 passed in as the sixth argument. Then we will type car.load image and pass in the string enemy car.png. Next, we will set car image equal to pygame.transform.scale and pass in car image as the first argument and a tuple with the values 130 and 150 passed in as the second argument. After that, we will add the car to the cars list by typing cars.append and passing in car. Then we will create some variables. We will have a variable named stripes set to an empty list, stripe count equal to 20, stripe x equal to 185, stripe y equal to negative 10, stripe width equal to 20, stripe height equal to 80, and space equals 20. Next will come a for loop for i in range stripe count. Inside of the for loop we will append a list with the values 190 and stripe y to the stripes list. Then we will increment stripe y by stripe height plus space using the plus equals operator. Now comes the infinite loop. While not done, we will loop through each event in pygame.event.get. Inside of the for loop, we will check if the event type equals pygame.quit. If that is the case, we will set done equal to true. Then we will check if collision and the mouse button is being pressed down. If that is the case, we will set collision to false and then cycle through each int i in the range of car count. We will set cars at index i's y value equal to random.randrange with 150 passed in as the first argument and negative 50 passed in as the second argument. Then we will set cars at index i's x value equal to random.randrange with 0 passed in as the first argument and 350 passed in as the second argument. Next we will set player x equal to 175. After that we will set player dx equal to 0. Then we will set score equal to 0 and call pygame.mouse.setVisible and pass in false. If not collision, we will check if the event type is pygame.keyDown. If that is the case, we will check if the user pressed the right arrow key. If so, we will set player.dx equal to 4. L if the user pressed the left arrow key, we will set player.dx equal to negative 4. If the event type is pygame.keyUp, then we will check if the player released the left or right arrow key. If so, we will set player.dx equal to 0. After that, we need to fill the screen with the color gray. 
If there has not been a collision, we will iterate over each index and stripe count and draw a rect on the screen for the stripe. Then we will have a for loop for i in range stripe count. Inside of this for loop, we will increment stripes at index i at index 1 by 3 using the plus equals operator. Next, we will have an if statement that checks if stripes at index i at index 1 is greater than size at index 1. Inside of this if statement, we will set stripes at index i and 1 equal to negative 40 minus stripe height. After that, we will call player.drawImage to render the player card to the screen. Then we will call player.moveX to move the player. Finally, we will call player.checkOutOfScreen and check if the player's x position has crossed out of the bounds of the screen. After that, we will iterate over each index i in range car count using a for loop. Inside of this loop, we will call cars at index i dot draw image. Then we will increment cars at index i's y position by cars at index i's dy value. After that, we will check if car at index i's y value is greater than size at index 1. If so, we will increment the score by 10. Set cars at index i's y value to a random number between negative 150 and negative 50. Set its x value to a random number between 0 and 340. And set its dy value to a random number between 4 and 9. For i in range car count, we will check if there is a collision between two cars by typing if check collision and passing in player x as the first argument, player y as the second argument, player width as the third argument, player height as the fourth argument, cars at index i dot x as the fifth argument, cars at index i dot y as the sixth argument, cars at index i's width as the seventh argument, and cars at index i's height as the eighth argument. After that, we will set collision to true. Then we will call pygame.mouse.setVisible and pass in true. Next, we will type the break keyword. We will then create a variable named text score and set it equal to font30.render and pass in the string score concatenated to the score cast to a string as the first argument, true as the second argument, and white as the third argument. Then we will write the text to the screen by typing screen.blit and passing in text score as the first argument, and a list with the values 15, 15 passed in as the second argument. Finally, we will call pygame.display.flip to update the display. Else, we will call our draw main menu function, since this else statement is for if the player crashed into another car. Outside of the if else statement, we will call clock.tick and pass in a value of 60. At the bottom of the code, we will call pygame.quit. The final step before we run the code is to download both images attached to this lecture as a course resource and drag and drop them into the folder where our Python file is being stored. When we run the code, we can click the screen of the game to start playing. We can move the car left and right to avoid oncoming cars. As time goes on, points are added to the score. Once we crash into a car, the game is over and we are taken back to the start screen. In the next lecture, we will look at a recap of what we learned in this section of the course.